So on today's OpenShot tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can actually not only adjust the type of view that you have on your entire project. Say, for example, you make adjustments here and there, but what happens when you accidentally move things around or make things disappear? And now you don't know how to get back to the default view. Like, so right now I don't see my preview window anymore because I accidentally clicked on something or maybe you clicked on something here and you don't have any idea on what you did and then you want to go back to your previous views or views that you could start all over again. So I'm going to show you how to do this in OpenShot and this is something that I kind of had to learn the hard way myself but a lot of people who are just beginning this might be really helpful if in case they accidentally do what I just did. So let's go ahead and get into this tutorial. Welcome to another episode of geekoutdoors.com. On this channel, you'll learn how to be creative and I'll teach you the tools you need to create. So be sure to hit the like and subscribe button to help the channel create more content like this. Okay, so let's go ahead and start off with the basics of what I'm talking about here. So in this case, we're basically customizing the way in which OpenShot looks. So then it's more uh, suitable for the way that you work. So this is actually the default view whenever you bring up open shot and it's fairly simple here is your video preview over here we have your project files transition and effects down here we have our project timeline and then if you actually click on one of your clips you can right click on your mouse and then you could go to properties and there's other ways you could do that as well but i'm just showing you like the overall types of ways that you can customize open shot and not only that, you could also move things around, which makes things really important. Like say, for example, your actual preview window is a little too small. You can adjust the size. So in essence, you kind of are moving things around. Um, and even though you can't move things around like block wise, it is moving the available space that you have to work with. So in this case, I can adjust the size here for the project timeline. And at the same time, you have some other options here. Uh, you can actually first choose from different views. And I don't know if you could see here, but right here, there are like two blocks for most of these views. So this first one allows you to see different types of views. So in this case, if I click on it, there is the project files transitions, just these two tabs. If I click on it again, now it's three tabs, project files, transition effects. And if I click on it again, it'll go back to those two tabs. And depending on what I'm actually looking at, it could change the way things look. So that's how you kind of adjust the type of views that are available. And you could do the same thing here in each one of these modules. So in some cases, nothing really happened that's major. But in other cases, it does change the overall look of things. So say, for example, I clicked on this view right here on my project timeline. So it actually moves things around. And then when I click on this one here in the video preview, it expands it all the way out. And at the same time, there is another button here. It looks like an X. So what it's gonna do is it's actually gonna remove uh, this particular view of this properties or whatever basically section that you have. So if I click on this X button, it makes it disappear. And right now this doesn't look great, uh, but you can kind of go back to what you had before. But this does take some time to get used to. And in some cases, you might have things that look completely off like what I have here. Or you can run into another scenario where, well, maybe you accidentally clicked the wrong thing and now you're thinking, all right, so how am I going to get back to that original view or even get back my video preview window? And so this is something that I've actually faced myself because I ended up with something like this, which looks absolutely horrible. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, I can't use OpenShot anymore because I messed it up. Now, let me show you how you could actually go back to the previous view or the original view that you have. So as far as I know, uh, you cannot customize your view and save that like other video editors. But the good thing is you do have ways you could actually go back to the basic default views. Let's just say that. If you love reading books, then check out Audible, which has the largest selection of audiobooks anywhere on the Internet. Sign up today and get a 30 day free trial. For more information, check out the affiliate link in the description area below. So we saw how OpenShot allows you to customize your work area. But what if you run into a situation like this that I showed you a little bit earlier that you're playing around with it or maybe you click something that was not the right thing to click on and now you're unable to see all the original things that you had. 
And so in this case, OpenShot thankfully does allow you to go back to some previous default views. And so if you go up here to the top, click on view, you're gonna see some options. The first one is view toolbar. So you could either hide it or show it. I like to see my toolbar. And you could also do full screen, which is what I have right now. Full screen here, or you could go full screen here, or you could press F11. But this is where it's really important. You go down here and you could choose different views. So if you click on here with simple view, it goes back to the default. So this is absolutely awesome because if you're like me and you like experimenting and trying stuff, at times you might break things. So in this case, you always have a way to go back to the default views. And there's some other views here. So another one is advanced view. So it's definitely gonna show more things. And then below that, we actually have a freeze view. So say for example, you like this and you click on freeze view. Now you can't really edit any of these views. And so in this case, that's a good thing. But in another case, you also can't accidentally, you know, change the views or delete something like I did earlier. So I'm gonna go ahead and unfreeze the view. And then there's another one called show all. And this one doesn't do much if you're already in the advanced view. But if you go down here to simple view, then I go view and then show all. It's very similar to the advanced view. It just looks slightly different. So this is show all and then I'll go to advanced view. So it looks slightly different because of this section right here where they kind of split the project file and then they have the transitions and effects uh, on a section below it, which I do like. And about the only thing that, you know, I don't have on all the time is the properties, but this is a nice view and you could close that and say that like, I like this view and I like this video preview larger. So in this case, I could always go to view and then come down here to freeze view and there you go. So this is actually the view that I like. And so now you see how easy it is for you to customize the overall work area that you have within OpenShot. But at the same time, it also gives you some default views that you could always go back to when you accidentally customize it a little bit too much. And so you actually had any thoughts on this tutorial or any other ways in which you use OpenShot, be sure to leave that in the comments area below. And if you did want to see more of my OpenShot tutorials and tips, I do have an entire playlist and I'll leave that in the description area below. So as always, if you did get value out of these videos, be sure to share, like, and subscribe. And if you're a creative geek like me, and you want to get exclusive access to more content that I don't put out here publicly on my YouTube channel, then join my Goal Content Creators Group, where you're going to get content like this and more for all the creative geeks out there. And the best part is, all of this is free. Simply head over to the link below, check out my page, and sign up for my Goal Content Creators Group.